Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Woe. So I have a new type of review video for you guys today. Um, I do what I call yay or nay reviews, which this is not one of those. Um, really what the purpose of those reviews are, they are also quick and also spoiler free as this will be, um, but they are meant to be like kind of focused for people like for newer books that are kind of more recent releases and giving you a sense of like, do I think it's worth going ahead and getting online for this at the library? Do I think that it's worth, you know, buying? Should you skip it? Whatever. This is for like these are going to be quick reviews and I think I might call these like hot take reviews meaning like just still very short still trying to keep it five to seven minutes um mostly spoiler free I'll definitely let you know if I get to a part where I'm going to talk about spoiler uh but for some things that I just have a strong reaction to that might not be frontless they may not be newer newer books but things that I'm still interested in still sort of want to like put out there for discussion and um I've just realized recently how much I enjoy review videos so I want to be better about doing more of them beyond just my project paros which I've been doing um so I'm going to try to be more deliberate when I have like a strong reaction to a book to go ahead and put out either a yay or nay review or in this case a hot take review. So hot take review this week is of The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. Now I have been I have been wanting to read this since this came out I think in either 2015 or 16. I got it finally as an ebook for I think like $2.99 so I started reading it and then in the middle of when I was reading it I was intrigued by it and enjoying it but I got something from the library that I had to like switch my attention to and I think in the midst of that I never came back to this. So recently I put it on my list of things that I definitely wanted to read in 2018. I was like girl like finish this up. It has been too long. Um, so I read it the other day. I finished reading it. And I will tell you, like, s spoilers, I guess. I absolutely love this book. If you saw my May wrap up, you already know that I really love this book. Um, I think I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Super, super good. One of my favorite things I've read this year. Um, but I think the reason I didn't get propelled to pick it back up is that I happen to have to put it down in what is sort of a lull uh, or at least a point of um, mild confusion in the book. So I just want to warn you structurally that the first, I'm going to say third of this book is really engaging. Like that you have a lot of questions about what is going on and like it's intriguing, but that you don't get a lot of like clarification. And I think that, uh, that kind of led to me having the opportunity to get distracted because I had so many questions that I think um, I was willing to sort of be like, I need a break from this, <laughs> if that makes sense. So um, I want to just say that I do think the first third of this book you have to kind of get through, not in the sense that it's bad or not, or, or that there's not interesting things happening, but just in the sense of like, you're going to have a lot of questions and you kind of have to stick with it. That being said, the world building in this particular book is fascinating. So in terms of like kind of high level concept, actually, you know what, let me just read you the back copy because I don't want to spoil anything in particular. Like, I don't think in this review, I want to give any spoilers. So I just I'll read you the, the copy so you kind of get oriented as to what what this is. And then I'll get into a couple of thoughts. So it says, uh, Carolyn's not so different from the other people around her. She likes guacamole and cigarettes and steak. She knows how to use a phone. Clothes are a bit tricky, but everyone says nice things about her outfit with the Christmas sweater over the gold bicycle shorts. After all, she was a normal American herself once. That was a long time ago, of course, before her parents died, before she and the others were taken in by the man they call father. In the years since then, Carolyn hasn't had a chance to get out that much. Instead, she and her adopted siblings have been raised according to father's ancient customs. They've studied the books in his library and learn some of the secrets of his power and sometimes they've wondered if their cruel tutor might secretly be god now father is missing perhaps even dead and his library stands unguarded whoever claims it will also inherit absolute power over life death and all of creation as carolyn gathers the tool she needs for the battle to come fierce competitors for this prize align against her all of them with powers that far exceed her own but carolyn has accounted for this and Carolyn has a plan. The only trouble is that in the war to make a new god, she's forgotten to protect the things that make her human. So I actually, I thought this was fantasy. This is not fantasy. Explicitly, there is no magic in this, though, as the back copy alludes to, there is God, but like, you can't really tell if this, if father is God because he is 
like has supernatural powers or that he is God because he understands the laws of this universe so well. So I kind of actually want to probably say that this is like a sci-fi dystopian book. That is part of what I, this gets into my thoughts. This is part of what I loved about this book. It was so like disorienting in a really interesting way that didn't make you feel like the author was like trying to play you or laughing at you or talking down to you. Like it just had a lot of like weird elements to it that somehow really did come together very nicely. The characters in here, Carolyn is what I wish people meant when they said a badass character um, or a badass female character because I think she is genuinely a badass character in a way that is not just like a manic pixie dream girl but like tough feminist version um, which I think is a lot of times what people mean by a kick-ass heroine and that I'm not that into but she is like a super interesting complicated character slash person. Um, I think that this is a really interesting story about nature versus nurture. There's a lot of threads in here that you kind of have thoughts about where they might be going, but like they don't come together till towards the end. I think this raises a lot of interesting philosophical questions. So like, I think this could be potentially a good like book club type pick because it would let you kind of get into like what's right and what's wrong in this book. And I think that the writing is just like really strong. It's not, um, I wouldn't say it's like beautiful, but it's interesting and it's very clear. Um, and I think when you're talking about genre fiction, sometimes that is really kind of what you want. I just really enjoyed my time in this. I am somebody who is a sucker for like genre bending books. And to me, that's exactly what this delivered. I really like, I, I was very engaged with this pretty much the whole time, even though I did have that like lull with it. Um, when I was reading it, I was enjoying it. And this is something that I would recommend for other people who really like kind of fantasy-ish, sci-fi-ish, like, kind of a weird hard to classify type genre book this could be a good pick for you if you liked for instance the rook by daniel o'malley i think you would like this it's got a lot of the same sort of like disorienting but like at like it's a disorienting world but you're in the hands of a very capable storyteller who's not going to let you just like be completely kind of out there um not knowing what's going on so basically yeah i just really enjoyed this book a whole whole lot um i appreciate it's sort of unflinching brutality if you if you're somebody who likes like really well written and like sometimes brutal action scenes this also has that um and I would give you just if you don't like gore maybe avoid this because there is some like shit gets real basically in this at several points anyway I really enjoyed this if you have read this book definitely let me know what you thought in the comments because like I said it's a little it's not front list it's been out a few years um so people may have had time to sort of like gather their thoughts. But I just wanted to tell you guys, I really enjoyed this book. I had a very strong response to it in a positive way. And um, yeah, I would be intrigued to read more from Scott Hawkins. I don't know that I've seen if he has other books. I should look that up. But uh, this, this definitely was like exceeding my expectations of how good it might be. And I don't know why, because at the time, especially I remember Book Riot, they all really loved it. And like, I just, I wholeheartedly agree. I think this is a great piece of work of, uh, genre fiction. If you're somebody who likes kind of literary genre fiction, this also might be good for you because I do, like I said, think the writing quality is pretty high. So yeah, that's my hot take on Library at Mount Char. Like I said, if you've read it, definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. But yeah, I think that will do it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that will do it. I hope you're having a really great day and I will talk to you later. Bye! Thank you.